everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to our Y and R chat for Sunday, June 25th, 2023. Let's start out with the good. <laughs> the good. Courtney Hope is really such a talented actress. She has become a real leading lady on The Young and the Restless. The hospital scenes of her learning that she lost the baby, asking to see the baby, processing her grief, just feeling physically and emotionally empty. It was all so heart-wrenching and heartfelt, and it all felt very, very real. I hated watching Sally hurt. But now the bad. I hated more watching her lash out at Adam. Adam should be grieving, not groveling. And that's important. So I'm going to say it again. Adam should be grieving, not groveling. And I really don't know if I can stand another couple of weeks of this. <sighs> Sally should be devastated that their baby is gone. But she should also be grateful to be alive. Adam chose her life over the babies. Yes, if you want to boil it down to that simplest of a statement. But it was the choice that I think absolutely anyone would have made. I think it's the choice that the doctors would have made, given how premature that the baby would have been had it been uh, born. Well, it was born. <sighs> and Sally really wouldn't even have known that there was a choice to make, but Elena disclosed all of the details to her. And I have to say, I really liked that Elena took the time to explain to us, the audience, via her conversation with Sally, that Sally was also experiencing an extreme hormonal drop. Couple that with exhaustion. But I mean, you know, when you're pregnant, all these hormones take over, and then you're fighting for your life and your baby's life, and all of those hormones take over, and now all of a sudden you're not pregnant anymore, and your hormones are just plummeting. And I think that's a real factor that shouldn't be discounted. Hormones are real. <laughs> I think we all know this. Hormones are real, and they can be very powerful. The rational mind can take a back seat when the hormones are in control. And I really think that right now, Sally's better senses are just overwhelmed, and I hope that in the coming weeks she will begin to level out and begin to see that. I'm glad that Nick was able to reinforce Adam's position, because when Nick finally got to the hospital, he told Sally that Adam made the right decision. He did say that. Adam made the right decision, don't you think? And I thought it was interesting that after Nick told Sally about everything that he'd been through with Cameron, she instantly related it to what had happened to her, that Nick had a similar decision to make, choosing between Sharon and Faith, choosing between mother and child. And Nick made the decision, he, she, she knows that Nick would have made the decision to choose his child, to choose Faith. But it's apples and oranges. It's a totally different, two totally different situations. And Nick, to his credit, did try to explain that to her in a way that was, you know, he didn't want to do her any more harm. It's not black and white. It's not like Nick 
is the hero because his daughter is alive and Adam is a villain because his daughter isn't. But I really think that Sally sees it that way right now. Nick is the hero. Adam is the villain. I am sure that Nick will continue to try to rationalize with Sally, especially now that he has asked her to move in with him. She said that she's going to think about it. I want to say she's going to say yes, but who knows? Maybe this is where Sally Spectre decides that she needs a break from both guys. Maybe this is the end of both her relationship with Adam and her relationship with Nick. Adam lost a child, too. Right now, Adam is stuck all in, alone in a hotel right now. He's brooding on the bed. <sighs> when he could have been getting to know Audra. I'm sorry, but why let Sally treat him like dirt? and continue to fall at her feet, and then Audra just tries to be friends with Adam, and he gives her the cold shoulder. Oh, he's going to fall over himself over and over and over again to get smacked down by Sally, all in the name of love, but Audra just comes up and tries to chat him up, and it's no. It's absolutely no. I am telling you, Adam and Audra would be hot. He could really team up with her to go full force at Victoria. And I feel like that could be an opportunity to humanize Audra's character. Because right now, Audra is very one-dimensional. She just wants power. There's nothing more to her. And it, I could see how it's, you know, getting a little tiresome. I mean, it's great. I love the over-the-topness of her. I love Audra. Uh, but I think we can start to add some more kernels of humanity in there for her by maybe balancing her out and putting her with Adam and maybe vice versa in there too. But I don't know. Right now, all Audra can see is that she wants to be in charge of Newman Media. So it kind of looks like Audra and Adam are being set up right now to become rivals. Maybe this will have some sexy results in the future. <laughs> At least I hope so. I'm starting to think that Adam's new wingman at McCall will end up just being Nick. And I, for one, like that idea very, very much. Very much. Even after everything that Nick had been through with Cameron, he asked Adam out for drinks. But, like, before even washing the sewer stench off of himself, he asked Adam out for drinks just to make sure that Adam felt supported and to s make sure that Adam knew that he had made the right decision. And, on top of it all, Nick hugged him. Adam held out his hand for a handshake and Nick gave him a bro hug instead. Oh, <laughs> that was awesome. I loved the bro hug. And I'll say it again. I think Adam and Nick are much better as friends than rivals. If Adam must have a sibling rival, let it be Victoria. Victoria is using Nick's personal devastation as a way to push him out of Newman Enterprises. She's calling it a leave of absence, but it's a forced leave of absence. And all it really is, is Victoria wanting to replace Nick, someone who is not afraid to challenge her, with Nate, someone who just does everything that she says and tells her everything that she wants to hear. Now, all that being said, I just don't see how any of this equals Nate is a scumbag. Nate is just doing his job. Nate is just doing the same thing that most executives do, trying to climb the corporate ladder. What's the big deal? 
He has no real power over the company. <clears throat> Victoria is not Ashley. She's not trying to offer Nate a board seat to take over the company and overthrow the rest of the family. So when did Victor go from being on board with Victoria and Nate's co-working relationship to now telling Nikki that he's worried? Victor saw Nate talking with Audra about promotions. Big whoop! It just... I don't know. It doesn't feel like a big deal to me. I feel... It, it, where Nate is concerned. I think Vicky, Victor and Nikki are right to be mad at Victoria. Victoria. Victoria is the one who's trying to push her brother out of the family. But that really is got nothing to do with Nate. That's less about Nate and more about Victoria being a brat. And Vic Victor still has the power to put his foot down on that at any time. This whole storyline is not very exciting to me. It feels like everything with Nate and Audra and Victoria feels like a paper tiger. You know, like it's supposed to seem like it's some big drama, but it's just not. The only part that intrigues me about all of this is Victoria and Nate's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> their sexual sexy relationship but apparently I'm in the minority and the majority of YNR chatters do not agree last week I had a poll question where I asked you are Nate and Victoria a yes or a no 78% of you said no to Nate and Victoria, which leaves me wondering, how can 78% of you be so wrong? <laughs> You're so wrong! <laughs> oh, why can't you guys just give me this? Can't you just give me this? <laughs> Because <laughs> now, YNR executives are going to be going through the website this week at YRChat.com. They're going to be seeing those poll results. And since we know that YNR cares so much about what us YNR chatters think, now they're going to think that, well, the majority of YNR chatters don't want Nate and Victoria, so they're going to turn around and cancel Nate and Victoria. Thanks a lot. <laughs> What am I going to do? Which wire won't blow us up dead? Eeny, meeny, miny, red. <laughs> hey, Chance, do you think that maybe you might want to call in the bomb squad or something? He was like, no, no, it's cool. I took a day course on how to defuse a bomb just like this, so I'm not even going to call for backup. <laughs> what? He had a walkie-talkie on him. When it was time to clean up the crime scene, he got on the walkie-talkie speaker and said, okay, come on down. Was there, like, a whole team of Tri-County officers waiting at the manhole top on the street for Chance to just invite them down to give them the okay? That is so stupid. <laughs> the whole bomb bit was so stupid. <laughs> and it reminded me... <clears throat> that soaps can be so stupid, which, you know, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you for that, YNR, because sometimes we do need a little stupid, <laughs> especially after the gripping psychological torture that was Cameron Kirsten's return. But now he's dead. Cameron Kirsten is dead. Not dead. <laughs> No, no, definitely, definitely dead, 
but never dead. It would be hard to put all of that trauma behind you when you don't change your clothes. <laughs> when you refuse to change your clothes, it's probably pretty hard to get over it all. Faith got home and almost immediately took a shower, put on like a nice clean robe. <laughs> But Nick and Sharon hung out in their sewer clothes for days. Sharon had blood on the front of her dress and she was like, I'm just going to sit here on my couch. <laughs> no problem kicking back. Nick had a head wound and a long sleeve flannel shirt that he put on for summer. And he was like, I'll go to the hospital and out for drinks and back. No need to change. No need to wash my face. <laughs> I was dying. I was dying. I especially could not believe that they let Nick into society looking like that. Doesn't this place have standards? I'm imagining myself, like, out on a date or hanging out with friends at society. No, out on a date with Nate at society. <laughs> and the guy at the table next to me smells like sewer. Uh, can I speak to the manager? <laughs> uh, well, Faith has decided that this is all too much for her and she's headed back to school kidnapped on friday back to school on monday that is commitment <sighs> actually i think she just wants to get as far away from genoa city as possible because i don't know if y'all have noticed but this town is way dramatic sharon on the other hand has been invigorated by killing cameron sharon and nick had a talk on the couch in their stench clothes and Sharon said she wasn't sorry at all for killing Cameron in fact if she had to do it all over again she'd kill him again too I love that <laughs> Sharon felt good about killing Cameron and she should in fact Sharon said that she has been awakened by it all that's the word she used awakened she said she has practically been asleep since ray died pouring coffee and nothing else but now she's alive again oh uh, what a thrill it was hearing her say that so what will be first on Sharon's new life agenda, I'm wondering. And may I suggest sex? <laughs> that is a good way to move on. If I were her, I would, first of all, throw out everything in my lingerie drawer. Since Cameron had clearly been pawing through it i would not want any of that stuff sticking around i'd just buy all new stuff and then i'd find a new victim i mean boyfriend to try it out on <laughs> will it be chance will it be nick will it be adam <gasps> hallelujah i need sharon front and center again John Abbott, sitting at the head of the Abbott family breakfast table. That is how I remember him. But, you know, I feel like I missed out on so much of his screen time just starting the show in 1993. I missed out on all of those original wonderful moments with... Ashley and Tracy. I got a lot of Jack, of John and Jack, because when I came on to the show, Jack was just about to lose Jabot to Victor, and that 
kick-started years of story of Jack trying to get it back. I was really glad that YNR included that clip, though, of when Jack was finally able to give John his legacy back and they became partners at the family con company. Oh, so great. It was, thinking back on it and putting it in a, you know, current perspective, it just was so shocking that John died. I'm sure that Jerry Douglas must have been shocked by it, too. Why did YNR kill John? Like, whose bright idea was that? We really could have spent so much more time with him. He could have continued to be valuable on the show for so much longer than he was. And I had almost completely forgot about the years that Jack spent seeing John's ghost. And that was well after the character had died. Ugh. <clears throat> Jerry Douglas. What a presence. Um, <clears throat> and I was really impressed with Kim Douglas uh, as Zelda, Tracy's um, publisher. I, I, I had no idea that that was Jerry Douglas's wife. I had no, um, I'd never seen her before, but I instantly thought that she was warm and funny and very likable. She was totally natural at delivering her lines. I thought she was great. I'm sure that it meant a lot to her to be there on set for an episode that was centered around her husband, um, Jerry Douglas, and John Abbott, the character that he played for 25 years. And I thought the episode itself was really well done. My beautiful Tracy. My beauty, Tracy. Called an emergency family meeting to try to mend fences between Jack and Ashley and everyone. But I also loved that that episode spent a little bit of time exploring Kyle's feelings for Summer. Kyle didn't get left out. That was great. Billy didn't have much to say, unfortunately. Um, Jerry Douglas and Jason Thompson would have never crossed paths. Um, but, you know, and they, they can't really show clips of a different actor, even young, uh, playing the role of Billy and interacting with his father. But I think there was something missing there. I think it would have been cool if maybe... Billy could have pulled a memento out of his pocket or something that he always carries with him and, and told everybody that this is something that reminds me of my father every day. Something like that that would have connected Billy more to the episode. In the end, it was mostly about Ashley and Jack and their current feud, and Ashley and Jack did sit down alone to hash out their differences, and I really loved that that's how the episode ended. Ashley and Jack kind of from an overhead angle talking to each other, and there was no sound over it. We just saw them physically talking and their mouths moving. There was something about that that made it feel more private, like, oh, this is between... Jack and Ashley, let's all just step away and let them have a talk. <laughs> I, oh, oh, this is between Jack and Ashley. I'll just leave the room. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> but that move also made it very non-committal because we know darn well that Jack and Ashley are going to be right back to battling it out next week. Go wherever you're happy. That was our quote from last week. Adam was trying to reassure Sally, trying to assuage her fears, and he told her, just go to your happy place. <sighs> go wherever you're happy. That, that's why it's, it's just so hard. I mean, we spent the last several weeks with Adam being nothing but kind to Sally, and then for her to turn around and make it all about him and just be totally tone deaf to anything that he might be going through, it just it makes it, it made it hard to watch, and I hope it won't continue on too long. But that must have been a very difficult quote, because there were only four winners. 
Henry, Francie, Ron, and good old Marky, you guys guessed it, so I have to give you extra, extra, extra congrats. Gee. Let's see if you guys, if more people can get this one. How about this? Peace is the only way. Sounds like it could be a Beatles song. <laughs> Peace is the only way. That is just the kind of hippie nonsense that I love. Who do you think said it? Go to yrchat.com to leave your guess. And if you get it right, then next week I will give you your shout out during next week's YNR Chat. Now let's flip over to the comments channel, starting with Michelle who says, Sally's reaction to receiving the memory box was heartbreaking to watch and brought me to tears. Great acting, Courtney Hope. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing we can all agree on is that it was great acting from Courtney Hope. She wasn't afraid to just really let it rip. I mean, there was no holding back. She went for it. And the boxes, the memory boxes. They should have given Sally that box like on her way out the door. Elena should not have given it to her right when she's just found all this out. They should have just slipped that in with her belongings. They didn't need to mention it. Like, here, let's... Let's help you rip open this wound a little more and we'll give it to you in your hospital bed. They just should have put it in a to-go bag <laughs> like they did with Adam. Here, it's a to-go bag <laughs> for your grief. Uh. Connie says, the acting was exceptional and I feel the pain. Sally lashing out at Adam made me wonder if this is a teachable moment about the real physical and emotional trauma that occurs when a couple suffers the loss of a child. A public health announcement about where to get help or support would be appropriate. They handled Chelsea's suicide attempt and depression very well, and this is another opportunity to address mental health. Yes, and you know, um, I mean, this wasn't, ex I mean, it was sort of, I don't know, does it count as a miscarriage? I don't, I, yeah, I mean, is, is that what it's called? But I m imagine that a lot of viewers watching those scenes have had miscarriages um, themselves or with their partner, and it probably triggered a lot of emotions for them. Um, it felt very real. It all felt very um, gutted, just very raw and very gutted. Diana says, the hospital scenes with Sally were very sad and made me cry. She is a very good actress. The pain she was feeling felt very real. I don't understand why she has so much contempt for Adam, as Allie was mentioning last week. It doesn't seem believable to me that Sally would not understand why Adam would want her to save would want to save her life. This is especially true when there was a good possibility that the baby may not have survived. Adam also told her that she could still try and have another baby and be a mother. All of these are good reasons why Adam made the choice that he did. I feel so bad for Adam and how Sally's making him feel. Adam feels like he's a bad person that ruins people's lives. Everyone needs to remind him of all the good he's done and all the lives that he's saved. You know, one of the things I love that you're highlighting here is that Sally still has a chance to have another baby and to become a mother. Um, if, Al if Adam had made the other choice, that would not be true. Um, it would be a world where Sally didn't have an opportunity to carry on and there was a slim to none chance that the baby was going to have that opportunity. Sherrod says, normally, and if this were the real world, I would never say this, but as Sue W often points out, these people are not real. So therefore, I can say, I am so happy that Sally lost the baby. Because if not, Adam would have been her whipping post for the rest of his life. Sally has been mean and unkind to Adam during that entire pregnancy, especially after. As Ali stated this past Sunday, Adam was by her pet bedside. All she could think about was Nick. Good riddance. Now with the loss of the child, Adam is as well. This means, of course, he will go back to his dark ways. I'm here for that this time around. And with a little luck, he'll be taking Audra along for the ride. Because I believe Victoria is about to fire her. Oh, you know, Sherrod, I totally agree with you here. Especially, I mean, like, uh, I hate to say, if it's not, if you know, 
in the real world, I would never say it, but I'm glad Adam and Sally are not having a baby together. I, I just honestly have not felt invested in their romance. Uh, I mean, it, it just, it hit a point where it was like, the man is just groveling and groveling and groveling, and she is just not reciprocating, not reciprocating, not reciprocating, and it just became like, okay, this isn't working. I don't know why I have to keep going through this, and then the pregnancy happened, and it just all felt very contrived, and I remember thinking from the very beginning, I don't think she's going to have the baby. Here she is not having the baby. For the storyline purpose, I'm glad it's not happening. I think that it there's a lot more opportunities for Sally to get out and interact with other people and I just wasn't happy with the idea of like saddling her down as mom Sally. <laughs> I kind of want Sally to be, you know, maybe slutty or something. <laughs> Sally go out. Sally and Adam both go out and be slutty for a while. Let's not saddle these two characters. We don't have that many characters at this point that are single. So I'm kind of glad that the story isn't headed in the direction of saddling Adam and Sally down into uh, a nest. <laughs> uh, but I also really like your um, bringing up that it's like, well, these people aren't real. Because it's an interesting line to dance that I remember thinking about when I very first started YNR Chat, like before the first videos went out. I started, I thought, well, how do I approach this? How do I talk about this? Because I'm approaching it on the premise that these are real people and yet I know that they're not and there's a, a balance that has to happen there you have to believe they're real or you're not really able to connect in with their emotions I mean there's something about it where um, believing that they're real allows you into their world and yet we also always have uh, that in the back of our mind that it's a story it's being you know we're, we're writing uh, for it you know I mean we have various other checkpoints to the reality that it is fantasy but balancing walking that line between reality and fantasy is something that I think about often and um, that I, I try to manage on a weekly basis you know you don't want to dismiss um, any of the real emotion of the moment that's being portrayed and yet um, we, we know it's not real. Well, uh, let's ask this question this week for a poll. Are you holding out hope for an Adam and Sally reunion or are you just done with it? I have to say, I was done with it months ago. <laughs> sure you can tell my enthusiasm for the whole storyline just went downhill about the point where he broke up with her for essentially no to save her I mean that was just so blunt and dumb and she never forgave him and everything since then is just blah. so I for one am voting that I am not holding out hope for Adam and Sally to have a reunion I am in fact looking forward to them both moving on um but I want to know if there's anyone out there that is. So go to yrchat.com and this week tell me, are you still wanting them to have a reunion in the near future? Or have you totally given up hope on that and, and hoping that they just move on from this? Let me know. Ellen weighing in in advance says, Adam is better off without Sally. Ever since he broke up with her to protect her career, she's been unwilling to listen unwilling to forgive and now is emotionally abusive. Adam gets enough of that from his family on a regular basis. Move on, Adam. Find someone who deserves your love and devotion. Sally isn't that person anymore. P.S. Audra is a snake, not her. <laughs> But what if he could turn her into not a snake? Uh, but every, everything else I totally agree with. Um, and I think it's interesting that you, you mentioned that it's like emotionally abusive, right? I mean, hello, I, I, I can only blame it on the hormones, except she's been this way with him to lesser degrees for quite a while now. But yes, to have no um, sense of what he went through, that, that it was a horrifying choice for him to have to make, and that he lost the baby too. To have no awareness of that is, it's, um, you know, it's just unbelievable. And I just think it's interesting that, um, yeah, emotionally abusive is, a, is an interesting way of categorizing it. But also, find someone, Adam, who deserves your love and devotion. Fine. She, she, you know, she didn't want it. She didn't return it. She has every right not to return it. 
that she doesn't have to be with Adam. But like after she said it a couple hundred times, accept it. Accept it and and find someone who does ex who does deserve you, Adam. Niece nine one one laying it down uh, sharply here says, "I want some good sex scenes, some fun flirting, and some excitement from our two hottest men on Y and R. That's Nick and Adam. We only have Audra, Sharon, and Elena." That, now, this is great because this is exactly the essence of the point of the miscarriage and kind of being glad that it happened. It's like, yeah, we don't have that many singles on YNR at this point. Sally's tied up in the... She's got the two hottest men on the show. Well, not hottest, but she's got two hot, hot eligible men on, the sh on a string right now on the show in this very uninteresting, unappealing triangle. And I'm just glad... Uh, I'm hoping that it's over so that we can move into maybe some good sexy scenes with some fun flirting and let's have some some fun i mean you know that's the other thing is like abby and devon are settling down in their little nest so we've got that we mariah and tessa are settling down in their nest we've got other couples on the show who are representing the nesting parenting thing like i want to have some fun with our singles we've got chance in there in the mix uh yeah i audra sharon elena yeah we we need some uh spice on the show at least free one of them up nick or adam or both kind of hoping it's both. Tina B says, ooh, what if Sally worked with Nick and Adam, all three working together to take Newman Media back? That would be juicy. The only thing is, I just feel like that would be more of the same. Um, and I'm kind of ready to move on from all of this. And I wonder if that's what the writers want us to feel. I wonder if YNR had to make the whole thing so unappealing that the viewers just accepted the breakup so that they can move on with other plans for both of the both or all of the characters. I think Sally's going to break up with them both. I think she is going to tell Nick no to the move in and say she just needs a break for a while. So I think Sal I think Sally is free of them both. That's my prediction. Naomi says, I liked that Adam was not in the mood for Audra's obvious flirting. Adam is so perceptive in sizing up people and their motives. She is a woman used to using her looks to manipulate people, and she was a little surprised that Adam showed no interest. Adam is more like his mom than he realizes. Hope was perceptive and kind, but nobody's fool. Yeah, but some cat and mouse would have been fun. Cat and mouse games with Adam and Audra. I mean, Adam doesn't get to have any fun. <laughs> Everything with Sally has been a bummer for months now. I want to see Adam have a true partner in crime. And I suspect that Audra might be a vampire, too. Moving on to other topics. Victoria says... Victoria's reaction to Nikki telling her that Nick had to choose between Faith and Sharon's life was underwhelming. She said the right words, but her delivery was ho-hum. Without taking a breath, she states, This is going to take some time for them to get past. That's another reason Nick has earned a well-deserved break. Victoria makes it sound like Nick has just finished a big project rather than enduring a harrowing, life-changing event. Way to be supportive, Victoria. Why, oh why, can't YNR give Victoria a personality? She is supposed to be the Victor 2.0, I get it, but Victor somehow managed to be charming to me over the years. And honestly, sleeping with the town hunk is the best and most interesting thing that Victoria has done in a while, and you people won't let her have it! <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on all 78% of you. <laughs> um, Daisy says, I really hope Victor has a plan in the works to protect Newman from Victoria's choices, which includes putting someone else in Nick's COO position temporarily rather than letting Victoria choose Nate. 
Maybe Victor will appoint Adam as interim COO. Victor could make a deal with Adam, tell him he'll sell Newman Media if he steps into Nick's position until Nick returns. Adam would accept that, of course, and then try to undermine sad pouty she didn't get her way Victoria every step of the way. Yeah, I like that idea. Maybe make a deal with Adam to put him in that spot. Yes, you're right. Victor needs to step in, not let Victoria get away with this and say, okay, well, you don't want one brother. How about the other brother? That's a good idea. Naomi says, Victor is seeing that Victoria is truly a chip off the old block. He is seeing a reflection of himself in her, and he's not sure he's comfortable with it. Also, it seems that Nate is starting to see that he may be part of a bigger plan than Victoria has revealed to him. She's got big ambitions, and Nate only thinks he's in control. Ooh, 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 I like that. And also, Gary says, I don't know if he's good or bad. But Nate needs to go. He's too enig enigmatic for my taste. But when Adam says he's not mad at Vic, the sister who loves him so, that it, that it is Nate who's manipulating the situation. Isn't it Victoria who's doing the masterminding? Is Nate the patsy or is it Victoria? I should pay better attention to those scenes, uh, but the disinterest uh, in me, so I keep it up. So to be fair, I don't know that the cheap affair between Nate and Victoria is not born of true lust. I do know a couple of big shots are about to be undone and it couldn't happen to a more worthy twosome Victoria Newman on the hot seat for once. <sighs> Gary, you're so jealous of Nate. <laughs> Stop being so jealous of Nate and his hunkiness. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Gary. <laughs> but I just don't understand why nobody sees in Nate what I see. But what you guys are seeing that I also don't see is um, you guys picked up on both Naomi and Gary picked up on this um, twist a little bit this week that... It's not Nate who's doing the manipulating. That Nate thinks he's in control, but it's actually Victoria using him as part of her larger plan, as if she groomed Nate to take Nick's position, not because she like wants Nate in it, but just because it equals more power for herself. Ellen says, how is what Nate almost did to his family so terrible? But the fact that Devon carried on an affair with Neil's wife while Neil was blind is forgotten. Neil did forgive Devon for that, so isn't that the point? Devon, Lily, and Nate have all made mistakes. So did Neil. Neil was a classy guy who forgave others. Devon and Lily acting all high and mighty doesn't honor Neil. Yeah! <laughs> Darn it, yeah! And it was Nate, like, throwing that in, or it was Nick throwing that into Nate's face this week about him being disloyal to his family. Well, guess what, Nick? You turned your father into the FBI, so, so, <laughs> your own father, Nick. I always say Nick, and I mean Nate, and then I say Nate, and I mean Nick. I don't know why I always, there's like four-letter N-words. I just keep transposing them. I don't mean to. Well, Lara says, <clears throat> speaking of nice, I like that Elena is showing the darker side of her personality since Nate betrayed her. Her character needs more development. She has brains and motivation. Nate and Victoria should watch their backs. Yeah, man, nailed that, uh, Lara. Elena's character needs more development. Robbie says, I have never cried watching Y&R until today. That hug. Why can't Nick and Adam always be like this? Robbie, you've been watching YNR forever. This is the first time you've ever cried and you cried at the Nick and Adam hug. Oh, that's awesome. I feel like YNR should um, send you like a, a, a gift or something. Like, congratulations on your first cry. <laughs> Your first Y&R cry. How many years have you been watching Y&R? Wow. It was a great moment. Great, great moment. I liked that a lot, too. Kamna says, Nick has redeemed himself for me this week by standing by Adam's decision and showing him some compassion. 
The move in with me deal threw me off a bit, and then again, I think it threw Sally off too, but I still don't find Nick and Sally convincing. As Allie said initially, somehow it comes off as very paternal with her. She would never talk to Nick the way she talks to Adam. Both Mark Grossman and Courtney Hope have done some great acting this week. Yeah, I think everybody feels that way on the acting. Diana says, I'm looking forward to seeing Nick work with Adam as it appears this is where the story's headed. I would love nothing more than to see these two siblings actually love one another and act like they're brothers to one another. The feud between them has been going on way too long. It'll be interesting to Nick and Adam to go for Nick and Adam to go up against Victoria. The tables are turning, finally. Eventually, I'd love to see all of the siblings united. For now, this rivalry will be fun as we see Victoria being the bad guy and the outcast of the family for a change. Victoria is a good choice for the family to go up against. Her character is more suitable, suitable for this role. I also like that Nate will be by her side. Bring it on. Yeah, and Tony has a really great observation here saying well victor and jack were the past newman abbott rivals since billy has been sitting in the big chair the current newman abbott rivalry could be billy versus victoria yeah i like that i mean this sets up everything that i love about you know jabot and newman enterprises so basically there's infighting at Newman Enterprises for who's the top dog. There's infighting at Jabot for who's the top dog. And then at the helm of both companies, we have rivalry there too. Rivalry on the inside, rivalry between them. And I think Billy and Victoria going head to head would be really interesting too. Maybe that's why the kids, maybe that's why Y&R got the kids out of the picture because that's exactly where they're headed. I think that's brilliant, Tony. Oh, Sue W says, wow, Nikki sure looks fantastic in that bright coral dress and the sleek hairdo. Melody Thomas Scott is such a doll. I've also been noticing for some time how um, becoming Victoria's lighter hair is these days. She looks so pretty. Melody Thomas Scott looks good right now. I mean, Wow. she And she looked like she felt good, too. You know, I mean, she was standing in Victoria's office, and she had that hand on the hip and that beautiful coral dress, and she looked so just like she felt physically good. There have been years where she looked like she had trouble. I think I know she had back uh, problems, and she just didn't feel well. Um, and now she does. She looks healthy. She looks fit and happy. And um, coral must be the color of the season, because Sharon's, I don't know, I mean, what do you call that? It was sort of a a dark coral color of Sharon's dress, or like a poppy red, uh, but maybe those are the fiery colors of summer. Um, here's a funny comment from Gary, who says, Chatties were commenting that Nikki is looking slim these days. I did, no I did not notice until the other day when she appeared in the coral dress and the sleek hair. It hit me like a lightning bolt. She has a swan's neck sitting in profile in her executive chair at Newman. What did she do? Stop eating? <laughs> Yeah, that's all. That's like the the way, right? I mean, you look fabulous. What'd you do? Stop eating. <laughs> You're funny, Gary. Oh, the Abbots. Henry says it is so cool that the late Jerry Douglas Douglas's wife Kimberly portrayed Tracy's agent on Thursday's episode as they paid tribute to Jerry's character, John Abbott. It's so rare in showbiz that she and Jerry were married for 36 years from 1985 to his death in 2021. As some of the chatters may know, I'm not that fond of flashbacks, but the tribute to John Abbott was nicely done and it didn't consume the entire episode. High praise for a flashback episode from Henry. I mean, that is the highest praise that you can receive. It's a flashback. They showed flashbacks and Henry loved it. What? <laughs> well done, Y&R. We'll send that note right up to the top. <laughs> Uh, Daisy says, I'm guessing the clips are because of the writer's strike, but I'm really enjoying the walk down memory lane. I hope they continue doing this long after the strike is over. I love it. You know, I was thinking the same thing about the flashbacks that I wondered if that was related to the writer's strike. And then also on Friday, we had a bunch of flashbacks of Adam and Sally. So I wonder if that's related. Where are we with that? 
I didn't check my YNR soaps and depth site this week, so I'm not sure if there's been any movement. Oh, Henry also says, looking ahead, it appears that Audra and Kyle will hook up as well as Summer and Chance. I don't have a good feeling about this since Harrison has to be considered. How can either one of those scenarios slash trysts have any meaning? Will it all boil down to just revenge sex? I suppose that if either one of them ends up in the bedroom, it is, I can't see any longevity in either situation. To use street vernacular, it's more like a slam bam, thank you ma'am. <laughs> well, you know, one thing I noticed from that preview is that Summer was telling someone, I can't remember who, but say, she was saying that Kyle wants a separation. A separation, not a divorce, no, no, a separation. And then Kyle's acting like he's going to go to bed with Audra for revenge sex. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Revenge. It's so boring. I don't know. Kyle and Audra aren't doing it for me. Chance and Summer have had more interaction. It would be more exciting for me to see them go at it. Uh, now, how about this? I like this conversation. Sharon says, in every scene, Diane seems so family-oriented and kind. But are we trusting her yet? It seems like such a short time ago that Diane bought Chemo's home and started the process of trying to convince Allie, Jack, and Kyle how she wanted to be a part of the family again. A lot has happened since Jack and Phyllis went to Chemo's home and met Allie for the first time. But when will Diane crack? She did start to lose it when she was choking Phyllis. I still don't trust her. Does anyone else not trust her either? Um... I do trust Diane, but only because I haven't seen any reason not to. Tucker, on the other hand, Gary says, because it's a soap, I like the dramatic, stylish way that Tucker McCall eavesdrops with his ear cocked up in the air to Nick and Nathan Hastings' table at the athletic club. Many of our hipper chats are now living and breathing, Tucker McCall. I suspect they're liking this, too. Uh, yeah, whether he loves Ashley or he doesn't, it will be. Tucker, who grabs control of the Abbots, not the lovely, perfect Diane. <laughs> yes, that is very true. I think Tucker's the one to watch. Everybody has their eye on Diane, but Tucker's the one to watch. Lara says, I don't trust her. I still think she's a master conniver who has a grand scheme in the works. At least I hope so. <laughs> nice, uh, nice Diane is boring, right? Uh, actually, Ellen sums up my feelings about Diane pretty well here by saying, if they do turn Diane evil, it's a rewrite. This has been a redemption story. A woman who missed out on raising her only child and wants a second chance at being a part of that family. Diane was never some evil mastermind like Phyllis and Ashley make her out to be. It will be a waste if they screw up Jack's chance to finally be happy. Well, what was up with the preview, by the way, where Jack's saying something about manipulating Kyle again? Or, I don't know, maybe he doesn't like that um, Diane is stepping in and, and vocalizing her support for Summer and wanting them to stay together. But it looks like Jack and Diane are going to have their first little argument next week. Sue W. says, Diane and Jack can be at long last happy soulmates. I'm fine with that to a point. But then what? More of the same? No Thanks. Seems to me that without the drama, Jack and Diane will be relegated to supporting characters just propping up the other juicier storylines. I'd like more than that for the both of them, especially Jack. Peter Bergman can give us so much more than dreamy and besotted or knotting his brow over Kyle and Summer. I can find sweet, count our lucky stars beaming couples on other shows of a different sort. I want mess and nonsense from soaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so too. Oh, but Sherrod says, well, why can't Jack still be himself and be with Diane too? The mother of their son, um, or she's the mother of their son. Only Victor and Nikki get to be the old married couple. You can be a married couple and still have drama around you. It can be done. You can have both. For heaven's sake, marriage itself is dramatic. Yeah, but I think the, the YNR writers, um, can they do it? That's the question. Can the YNR writers let Jack and Diane be happy without making them boring? Because usually it's like once they let a couple be married, the only thing that YNR can come up with for them is divorce. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the trajectory. It's like you're happy, then you're set off to pasture, and then you're brought back when it's time for a divorce. I think the exception to that rule would be Michael and Lauren. They have somehow managed to keep it spicy. So maybe Jack and Diane can get the Michael and Lauren treatment. Uh, but Ellen says, hey, that's exactly, I just had my 44th wedding anniversary and I'm still my snarky self. <laughs> <laughs> I don't rob banks or fake my death regularly, though. <laughs> Alan, why not? Why are you not robbing more banks? I think you should put on a little black and white stripe number and go rob a bank. <laughs> Bring home a money sack with a big dollar sign on the side of it and just see what your husband says. <laughs> Happy anniversary! And uh, speaking of big life events, Tina B, your birthday is tomorrow, June 26th. Oh, happy birthday. I love your comments. I was reading some of your comments this week, and I hope you have a really lovely day. Why don't you stop by Crimson Lights, get yourself a butterscotch scone. How do you feel about that, butterscotch? Some people don't like it, but I like butterscotch. It's different. <laughs> Faith said that. She offered Chance a butterscotch scone. I'm like, wow, you know, that actually sounds really good. Is it frosted? Is it is the butterscotch on the inside of the scone? Or do we do a glaze on top with some additional butterscotch on it? I don't know, but I've never seen that in the case at Crimson Lights. It's basically still all the same stuff in the case. But <laughs> I assume they've got butterscotch on the menu for summer now. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, okay. That's it. If you guys want to go leave some comments, go to yrchat.com. That's a good place to do it. You can see all of the photos, all of the polls and the quotes and all the good stuff there. I hope you enjoy it. Everybody but YNR uh, executives, please go to the website this week. I don't want anyone to see those nasty poll results. <laughs> from last week. Just wait. I'm going to, I'll bury that. I'll bury that one. <laughs> uh, just strikes a nerve. Strikes a nerve for me. I don't ask much. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, but this, I want this. Can't you give it to me? All right, all right. I love you guys. I will see you next week. Everybody have a good one. Bye.